What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the uh, single overhead cam EJ257 hybrid build. I can't remember what part it is, uh, but of course you can see it in the title. Uh, I've kind of gone ahead and done a couple things off of camera. Uh, I didn't film a little bit. I've been really busy with something else. and uh, But I, I really have got to get the engine back into the car. Um, the plan at this point is to get the engine into the car allow it to run as an NA engine just so I can get the car out. I won't build the up pipe right away but uh, I, ne I need to get this engine into the car and run it so, so I can do another job for somebody. It's just one of those things again, right? I'm ready to start actually putting this thing together. I resprayed the intake manifold that uh, lime kind of green color. Uh, I've obviously got to clean up the hose to kind of make it match again. But the accessory brackets this one was green, this one was black, so I redid them in black. They turned out pretty good, I guess. Just looking at them now for the first time after drying overnight. So, uh, the harness, I ended up uh, cleaning up quite a bit and retaping it. And uh, also sprayed the fuel rails black. So when it's all together and back on there, it should, it should look really good and uh, really once all the wiring and fuel and intake are all bolted back on with the accessory brackets I'll be pretty much ready to put it back onto the engine crane and do the couple things I need to do the, in the back including the separator plate and the flywheel and clutch of course and then at that point uh, I'm going to be kind of ready to put it into the car I'm gonna to have to clean up some of the things like at least clean up this cross member because it won't be a very accessible one maybe in here and uh, I'll want to spray that uh, clean up and spray that power steering pump and reservoir but yeah I'm just gonna start getting to work putting things together and show you what the results are so yeah actually a couple more days have passed by and I haven't really done much again um, but the thing's pretty much assembled so uh, I've gotten all these brackets cleaned up and painted. Uh, the alternator is just kind of sitting in place right now. I actually did clean up a pulley on that. I got the ignition reasonably sitting in, sitting in place anyway. Even put in new, a new set of spark plugs. I'm thinking I still don't have enough a lot of time to spend on it tonight. But I am going to at least get it off of the stand. Slung on the crane. Sit it on a bucket. Probably put the clutch and everything on the back together. And then maybe tomorrow night or the night after, I'll start dropping this thing back into place. See what happens. So I've got the engine off the stand, sitting on the crane, well, sitting on the bucket, hanging off the crane. Uh, I've got the separator plate all on and uh, resealed, clutches installed, and we're. I'm at the point I'm pretty much ready to raise it up and drop it into the engine bay. I did a little bit of cleaning in the engine bay, but not a whole lot. I really just at this point need to get the car out. But uh, probably tomorrow night I'll come back out, maybe to, maybe the next night, and actually sit the thing in, pretty much get it all hooked up. Uh, the turbo will not be on it, and only par part of the exhaust will be on it, so it's going to be really noisy the first time it starts up. But uh, as long as it runs, it'll just get backed out, and then... I can think about working on it in the future. The the turbo I'm going to take into work. I'm probably going to have to torch off that up pipe or at least heat up the bolt so I can get everything apart and clean up the turbo. So when I come back in with the car, I'll be able to, you know, start preparing to actually manufacture a new up pipe for it. But uh it's uh it's been a little bit difficult for me to get back into the swing of things. <laughs> so yeah, I really got to get back into doing this because I'm here and I was just like oh yeah YouTube <laughs> so, I almost missed you guys uh, but obviously I've got the I don't know if I showed you if I had it on the crane I probably maybe I did yeah I did because I showed you the clutch right yeah so I'm ready to drop this thing down into the car and uh, should be fairly straightforward and once it's sitting in there then I'm just gonna probably leave it for tomorrow and then get this thing all wired all hooked up and wired in tomorrow 
I guess really it's just I've lost a lot of ambition to actually work on the car, but I've I've got to get back into this stuff because uh, just too much to do. And uh, you know I even put off running the RB engine, which I am still going to do that. That still is going to come out, but uh, I've I'm just super busy. I like I told you guys so. First thing is getting this thing down into the car, and then uh, come back tomorrow morning. We'll get it all wired up, and should be able to pour some oil in, and r at least run it without the turbo. I'm gonna plan on bypassing the coolant lines, just putting them together, and then the oil feed. Uh, I think I'm just gonna put a bolt through the banjo fitting, and then just put some copper washers and s some a nut and bolt to hold it all together. So. It'll take pressure. The line will have pressure, but it won't spit out of there. It might leak a little bit. And then the uh, the actual oil return that I have on the valve cover, I'll just slip a little cap over that. I should do that now, probably actually. And uh, at least so that I can start it, ha live it have a, a, a short initial run, and then back the car out. So uh, no sense talking about it. Get to work. Adams fall apart. Solar flares arrive. Buildings collapse. Only a few will survive. The world as we know it will no longer be there. Be there. Water is gone. A new era has begun. Prepare yourself. The Apocalypse. some of the sun in here and warm the garage up because the, the concrete just keeps everything cold but I'm ready to start hammering away on this thing today and uh, it shouldn't actually take me very long I'm probably not going to show you guys a whole lot um, I do want to try and paint that power steering pump I should have done it before taking putting the motor in but I'm probably going to take it off and clean it up a bit and paint it that way if the car goes at some point the engine will still be really good shape or look really good <laughs> and I could pull it out and put it into another car and yes I do that kind of stuff all the time I just want the car to perform well it doesn't have to be you know it doesn't have to look great uh, the the centerpiece is obviously going to be the engine when you open the hood and that's that's basically the way I want it so so I'm probably just going to go ahead and do a pile of stuff underneath maybe you know motor mounts get all the the rest of the bell housing bolts in because probably only have about half of them and uh, put the exhaust the, at least the exhaust header on and uh, sit the rat in place and just start hooking up as much as I can and I'll come back and show you what I've got done I've only been a couple hours not really rushing and uh, I'm almost together I've, I've gotten the fuels all together I do need to run vacuum to the regulator to the factory regulator um, I'm gonna 
not use the FMU for now so I don't have to worry about that or any of the vacuum lines going like the boost gauge or anything like that I'm just gonna leave it all off for now um, so I've got the rad in the the bottoms all done so the exhaust the exhaust is on the mounts are all tight I've got the rear dog, dog bone in um, so I got to think about some bypassing of some coolant hose here and I've also had to like the where my oil return from the turbo goes so I've just got a piece of hose on that with a bolt stuck in the end kind of sitting up there so if any oil does accumulate in there at least it won't leak all over the place that's just a temporary thing until I get the turbo back in uh, the oil feed line I'm just gonna kind of bring it over this way and put a bolt through it with some copper washers to try and attempt to make it not leak and then just sit it over here to the side in case it does just drip or seep a little bit um, but now I was thinking about these valve cover breathers um, because the last ones were pretty much shooting oil out of them from the uh, cracked piston right so losing compression directly into the into the crankcase and these guys were just like puffing out you know oil mix and so I went ahead and bought some new ones and I'm also gonna change up the hose and make make everything new again so now I can uh, I just gotta get a clamp and kinda sit these guys back in here and uh, zip tie it in place or whatever and then I've got the oil filter on so it's full of oil okay so it is the following morning uh, or almost afternoon <laughs> and uh, I've gone ahead just finished up what I what I needed to get done so the power steering pump is painted reasonably I mean it's a rotten old power steering pump but it's installed belts all tightened alternators tight um, I've got coolant and oil in it and I left the coolant in it overnight and I've noticed a small leak and that's that coolant crossover pipe so I I didn't have the proper o-rings I reached in a, a kit of o-rings that I have put them in there and obviously that the one side didn't seal the, one, the other side did and maybe it's a little bit of excess paint that I left there do I think I can change them without taking the intake off that's possible but I don't know I, I've got a bunch more work to do anyway and the cooling systems gonna have to be opened for when the turbo goes on because the coolant lines need to go to it so it's not like I don't have to uh, open up the cooling system again anyway but yeah I that's the only really one thing that I saw um, another thing I uh, filled the PCV with JB weld and this little uh, s this is like a early generation secondary air injection type deal and that actually went down to a little manifold that was on a, a little air man, airway that was on the original manifold that this throttle body was on so this intake is not original to that throttle body now and I'm kind of remembering that uh, I've left this vent open for now which I might even stick a piece of hose and just leave it over to the side I'm not quite sure yet because it probably is going to blow a little bit out of there. Um, I mean, everything's just kind of temporary. The OEM regulator, just direct rate to manifold vacuum. All the FMU stuff's disabled for now. And, uh, of course, I just have the, the header on there. Um, but there is actually no, o, no primary O2 sensor in it. So we're going to set some codes, obviously. And... Uh, it might actually lope a little bit when it first starts, but it doesn't. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need an O2 reading when it's, you know, when you're in open loop. So at least to start it and run it and, and get it out of the garage, should be able to make that happen. Uh, so I think I'm at the point I'm ready to fire it up right now. I'm charged. I've had it on charge for probably half an hour, 40 minutes at least, and. Uh, yeah, it's showing it's taking some good stuff there now. So I pretty much just have to hit the switch on the breaker. And then I think I'm ready to fire this thing up.
Fingers crossed. So here we are. This is the moment of truth. Now, if you think back to what I've done, I put a set of new pistons with kind of a mix match of some rings into a used block. Stuck on some heads that aren't originally supposed to be on that block. And I'm going to try and run it with NA Electronics. <laughs> so, anything can happen. you got to always realize that when you're doing this kind of stuff. You, you know, anything could have missed. Anything could have been missed. And, uh, you know, anything could happen. This thing could actually make noise. I don't know. But the only way to actually find out is to start it and run it. So that's the, you know, I'm at that point. And uh, like I said before, fingers crossed because this is uh, kind of the make or break moment right here. So it started and ran. Uh, it's really noisy, of course, because the uh, exhaust is off of it. But I got oil everywhere. <laughs> and it looks like it spit the filter gasket out or something. I don't know. I, I'm going to have to have a better look and let you know. So I really can't explain why that happened. Uh, the, the, I took down the oil filter and the gasket, the O-ring on the gasket, had actually flipped out a little bit. The filter seemed to be pretty tight, and uh, usually I notice that stuff when I'm going together. <laughs> so I don't know if it's going to happen again, but I, you know, I just reseated the gasket, uh, kind of cleaned up a little bit down there, um, and I'm going to give it a second try. Obviously, this thing, I mean, with the exhaust off of it, it is loud, and I don't know what the mic's picking it up like. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to make some audio adjustments. And uh, definitely the oil pump is working like 100% because the sink pumped the oil pan dry in about 10 seconds. So I had to refill the thing with fresh oil again. And uh, here we go for round two. So, uh, it did it again, and uh, what causes something like that? Excessive oil pressure? I can, I can see it on the, my gauge, the oil pressure shoots up, full maxes out the gauge, and as soon as I saw it drop off to 40 really fast, I just kind of looked underneath the car, saw oil pissing out again, shut, shut it down. So I, I really, I don't know why I have excessive oil pressure. Um, the pump is obviously a possibility, but uh, you know pumps create flow and and bearings and and galleries will cre create restriction for pressure. So I'm gonna have to think about it and then uh, kind of come back to it. So yeah, that just goes to show that not everything goes as planned all the time. So I've you know I've read about 40 minutes and tried thinking about it and uh, seeing the gauge max out like that uh, I just think that oil pump that I bought from eBay yes eBay screwed me again uh, there's a there there must be a problem with the with the pressure relief valve or the bypass valve in it and it's actually not it's just jammed shut or stuck closed and the oil pressure can't push up against it to maintain a pressure 
So that means the front cover's got to come off, the crank pulley's got to come off, the front cover's got to come off. And I had actually thought of taking the oil pump off of the 2.5 block that came out of the car and installing that pump onto this block, but that requires all the timing to come off and the oil pump would have to come off. So I just had the idea, well, I'll, what if I just take off the front cover and get down to that, that pressure relief valve, which are kind of short to you right now. The pump's right here, and you see that channel right there, and you take that out and there's a spring in there with a kind of a little piston that acts as the valve, and the oil pressure will push up against it to create the pressure. So I think if I take all that out and then kind of put it into this one and maybe at least get it together with the filter on it and just kind of run it quickly just to see if it does a blow out the filter gasket again. And if it doesn't, then I can just put it back together, clean everything up again and get the car out. Uh, if it does, then I've got to really think about it and I'll probably just push the car out at that point. <laughs> but I'll try and uh, work on it the next couple evenings and get it to the point that I've got that done and figured out anyway. Um, and then hopefully I will have a Thursday video up. Um, as for the engine running, it sounded good. I mean it was crazy loud because there's pretty much no exhaust on it, just the header. but. I didn't hear anything like out of the ordinary and definitely running on all four pistons. So it's hard to say where we're at right now. There's a bunch of issues that need to be cleaned up, but uh, I need to get this oil thing figured out first before I spend any more time on putting this thing back together because uh, that's a major issue. I mean, I don't want to be blown out. Imagine I blew, blew at the rear main seal, like I just got to pull the engine again. You know what I mean? This is what we go through. So, uh, I still want to be a mechanic. <laughs> but keep in mind, this is all used parts I put together. I did not spend very much money on this. Uh, if it, if I do get it all together and it runs really good, I mean, I'll be so happy. Um, but I think it is. The way that it sounds, it sounds really good. And, uh, just gotta hope for the best, right? If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button for me leave your questions and comments further down below and i'll see you in the next one